So, Savir. Savir gets his fourth rogue level. He is already Aldori Defender 1. He was at the Academy. But he went to Rogue. He chose the life of an adventurer. Rogue talent. And this is important. Debilitating injury, which allows me to use various different modes like Bewildered. Minus two penalty AC when I hit them. Or disoriented or even hamper it. Persuasion, perception, stealth, trickery, mobility, athletics, and knowledge world. Yes, it is not as high than others because they taught us less skills in the academy. Life of an adventurer requires a bit more skilled characters than World of Soldiers. One of the reasons to go. Here we have Combat Expertise. You can choose to take minus one penalty on melee attack rolls and combat maneuver checks to get plus one dash bonus to your armor class. And it grows plus one by any four level. This is an important feat for me. Not that I plan to use it a lot, but it is required by several others, other feats. Now here is another problematic place. Can the observer, I want this one, or I will just take a skill focus instead. It is doable. But right now it's either fast stealth, or, or, combat trick. And more precisely, combat reflexes. You may make a number of additional attacks of opportunity per round equal to your dexterity bonus. With this feat, you may also make attacks of opportunity while flat footed. Well, the last part is not that important to me because I already have uncanny touch and I'm going to get improved uncanny dots at some point but the first part is and so I'm going to take combat reflexes from the list of combat tree. Let's see here. Yes we have these and mobility is 19 with boots of elven kind. Perception could be far higher. Ah in time, in time. And uh, actually how is that's a low. Wouldn't that be... Let's see. Aha! Yes, plus two trap finding. Now it goes plus ten. As it should be. Christian continues as a cleric. This is an easy one. Persuasion, perception, or religion, lore, nature. And I would like to take extra channeling, but I'm going to take combat casting first. He really doesn't need much else. Combat casting and a bunch of extra channelings whenever we get them. This part. Here is another one. Wizard. Now, we are training Octavia to become an arcane trickster. This is what it requires. And now she is ready for it, or soon will be, because we will get a sneak attack to second rank for her. Trickery for mobility for ability to cast arcane spells at second level, knowledge arcana four, and sneak attack two, which will be resolved now. But that leaves us interesting point. Do I actually need mobility for you? I think not. But I need Epson. And I think that's it. He does need I acknowledge Arcana. I need Stealth and Trickery for her as well. At least for now. At least for now. We might drop uh, Stealth away at some point. 
but not yet. She doesn't have spells to support that skill, and we want her ability enough. And there is the accomplished sneak attacker. He will get that plus the six bonus sneak attacks and thus now available for Arcane Structure Roll. We will get that at the next level. Web, no questions asked and sense vitals, no questions asked. One round per level. This allows you to make sneak attacks as the rogue ability blah blah blah. Additional d6 points of damage. This additional damage increases by d6 for every three caster levels you possess. The maximum of plus 5d6 is 15 level. In the end, without this spell, she can create a massive amount of damage already. And this will just increase her damage up to 5d6 more. It's going to be devastating when the spell is on. Okay. Lindsay, you are an easy one as well. Bard, continue your path as a bard. Use magic device, perception, knowledge world, one to mobility, and that is probably the last to mobility. I wanted her to have that so that she would be more effective if he ever needs to fight defensively. And the last one goes to persuasion. Yep, it will. I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to continue putting points to mobility. I might, or I might just put more points to stealth on her, because he needs that as well. Well, not exactly needs, but I want, want her to have. Maybe. I haven't fully decided yet. Now, what I would want to do is to get point blank shot, so that we could get so unavailable. Where is it? Yes, she is now taking minus 4 penalty every time she shoots into combat, so she really isn't that practical uh, at that. But there is this lingering performance, which is far more important to us. Benefit the bonuses and penalties from your bardic performance continue for two rounds after you cease performing. Yes. This is something that I really, really want her to have. It's very useful to her. Very, very useful to her. And from here, there are plenty of spells that I would like to give to her. But I believe that we are going to go with Blur, probably. Because it grants 20% mischance. And it is not restricted to her. This could be good. Very good, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, this would be good as well. Would save Christian spells a bit. Oh, we already had communal person for that. On Christian, he just got it. Visibility, not this one. And uh, mirror image could be good. And sound burst would be good, but let's keep her as supportive for her going to help us and her. And she has perception 14 now. I gave her the canny observer ability. She really is our perception person right now. Amiri will continue her path as Barbarian, and she is an interesting one, because I am actually going to give her one or two tuck levels at some point. 
I want someone who can scare people. But we are not taking it now because at this level he gets improved uncanny dodge. The character can no longer be flanked. This is very important for her and we are most definitely going to use And here is where I have made a mistake. I didn't mean to grant her any more mobility. I was going to leave it at 3. But... What do you know? Perception, lore nature... Actually, you don't even need... You need lore nature, yes. Christian probably has higher than you for now. Yes, she does. He does. But I'm still going to keep that because there's no guarantees that I have Christian and you always at the same time in the party. Let's put that. Or. Okay. Or nature and the rest of it athletics. It would be five now if I hadn't made, made this mistake here. And I am con I will continue putting more points to persuasion, but when we take that rogue level, we'll settle it. He gets a couple of more points for that. And if we will take two of those levels, well, that would be even better because then she will also take evasion and frightening appearance, which will grant her grant bonus to intimidate checks. But that is not a problem for the day, why we are increasing his, uh, her athletics, because she is the strongest one for us, of all of us, and she will be better at this than Savir will. And no question here, let's just take our attack. Last fun from the team. Alaric continues as Tower Shield Specialist and he gets... Oh. She does not take the minus 2 penalty on attack rolls because of the shield's encumbrance. Brilliant. This is a good one for her. So now he can actually do more attacks as well. And in this situation we have a bit of a problem what to take. All of this is good. See, I'm not sure if he need she needs that. He will need persuasion at some point. He already has mobility three to support her fighting defensively. Hmm. Let's continue on this path. Right? There is no reason to take that yeah, there's no reason to take any other right now. Now this is going to be interesting. I am torn between blind fight and weapon focus. Now the weapon focus could be useful because she actually hits something. Well, it's easier for her to hit something without that tower shield penalty. But I am not sure which weapon to commit. He's currently using Bastard Sword. I'm not sure if that is the sword or weapon she stick with. So the other would be Blind Bite. Hmm. You gain immunity to gaze attack. Let's take that because that is something we will absolutely want to have is all defensive and we'll see what we get if we get something interesting we might take weapon focus or if we don't we'll just take the view sport and that is it that is for the team
rest of our friends will have to wait. I haven't really traveled with them, so I need to have more information of what they can do and where they could go before I make any ideas about or calls about their levels. I think we have nothing to do right now. I could expand, but it requires funds that I do not have right now. I could buy them, but right now we need need the money. Let's just wait for a while because I believe this city is getting ready soon. Right? Yes, finished in three days. Okay. And if I understood correctly, the project we had was... Hold on. This also ends in three days, so we will find something else to do in the meantime. And I believe that we were supposed to find the tiefling girl, Kallikke. That was her name, yes. From the city, uh, well, village. <laughs> Somewhere here, and we also needed to visit the store, because I think our friend Hasuf has few use useful items to us. Something worth spending money at. And he would be here. Alright then, let's see what you have. The important, the most important is... Back of holding 25,000. And we don't even have that much money. Okay. What we do need is crowbar and rope. We spent our rope already. And I believe there was something very useful here. Yes, worth spending money at. Grab Springer close, plus 5 competence bonus on all trigger skill checks. Eyes of the Eagle, plus 5 competence bonus on perception checks. And Cloak of Shadows, plus 10 enchantment enhancement to all stealth skill checks and immunity to blindness, blindness and dazzling. Thank you, I'll take those. And now we are poor again. Ooh, whooping too cold. This should make my life a bit more easier. Trap Springer close. I will lose plus one all my resistances, but immunities are nothing to sneer at. And as the eagle. You take this one, it suits you well. It is very pretty barbaric looking. And you take that one, little one. Lindsay now has a cloak of her own. Hmm. She can keep those, she does have that uh, use magic device. So let's see my skills now 19 mobility, perception 15. It's get, it gets better soon. Stealth 24, and trickery 19. Excellent. There you are. Kaesi. A tense silence hangs over the house. Kaesi, your tiefling friend, emerges from the shadows, but her eyes are staring into the distance. She seems to look right past you. No, not now. The turmoil is suddenly over, but you see fear in Kaesi's eyes, her blue eyes. It's you. I want to say I... Hey, I think good. Please don't be afraid. You can tell me the truth. What's going on? Kaesi. The girl closes her eyes and clenches her fists, obviously in the grip of a strong emotion, but one you cannot read. I knew it couldn't last forever. Why did he why did he even make this rule if he knew it would be impossible to keep? Come what may, you should know, Shavir, that the person you know by the name of Kaesi does not exist. 
My real name is Kalike and I, we, well it's a long story and such stories are better told beside welcome in fire. Will you hear me out? I see Kalike. How did I already know to call you Kalike? I must have an insight. Fine, let's go. So which... So you are Kalike, the other girl was... I see, right? Right. Kalike. Stories by the fire in the desert where I was born. My fondest memory. When the day is done, hosts and guests, parents and children, friends and rivals, all gather by the fire under the stars to tell their tales. All they did, all they witnessed, all they heard from other travelers, and the whispers scattered by the desert wind. My sister and I often snuck in to hear these stories, hiding in the shadows just beyond the circle of light and warmth. We are hellspawned, you see. Thieveslings are unwelcome quests in Guadira. How do you spell it? Guadira? Unblessed by the light of merciful Saren Ray, we grew up sleeping in a common tent, scavenging food here and there like orphans, all but outcasts and disowned. We were 13 when we left and set off to find happiness in the cities, and everyone we left behind sighted with relief. My sister and I, we are twins, but as different as the sun and moon. Her name is Kanira, which means silent flame. She is fire, a cold fire, but one that turns everything to ash. I am a river. It brings me joy to give water to tired travelers and nurture green shoots. But when I float, I am about to bring death. Despite our differences, we are one. Our lives belong to the divine Nethis, and by his mercy we now live in turns. While one of us is here, the other sleeps in another plane, and when she wakes up, we switch places just as you just witnessed. Just as you just witnessed. Nethis. Nethis also known as the All-Seeing Eye, the Garundi God, who holds knowledge and magic above all things. He gained enough power to witness all things, and this boat ruled him his divinity and shattered his mind. He is a good god of magic torn between destroying the world with one hand and saving it with the other. So this is why you didn't remember me when we were talking in Chamandi Aldori. How could I remember you? I never met you at the time. That was Kanira. She was the one who told you at the reception and help you fight off the assassins. Right. We usually write each other notes, recounting in detail all that happened and describing any friends that Kaesi had made. At that time, we switched right in the middle of a mansion, engulfed in fire and filled with assassins. Kanera didn't have the time to write any notes. And how is it you began to live in turns? This story is one I never told to anyone before, no one in the whole world, and it's not easy to confine in a stranger. There is too much grief and guilt in it. If you don't mind, I'd rather not go into all the details. Fine. You see, my sister died, and I couldn't get over it. Anira was killed by a soul eater, a monster summoned, summoned by secret followers of Abaddon's arc demons. Whoa. Those who summoned him died in a fight, but the beast was too strong for my sister, and I wasn't even there to protect her. I... We just had a fight, and we both did some stupid things just before, but I don't want to talk about that now. When I found out what had happened to my sister, I was ready to make a deal with any power if I only I could get her back. If only I could get her back. And I found such a power. I was contacted by... Arcontain, the herald of the god Nethys himself. She promised she would return Kanira to life, but on two conditions. First, we must both keep the arrangement secret. Second, we would never be able to meet again. And so our new life began. Now we flee through the world, guarding our secret, always introducing ourselves as Aesi to hide that there are two of us. And when we switch places with each other at random, while one lives, the other sleeps in a demiplane, 
want to create it specifically for us. And you can't control these switches? No, we can't. They happen at random, most of them while we are sleeping, but sometimes in broad daylight. That's why we can never stay in one place for long. When someone witnesses a switch, we usually tell them tales of special magic way of traveling, but people start noticing strange things and begin to figure things out. Truth to be told, I'm so tired of having to pretend. We knew this, this couldn't last forever and now the truth is finally out. Ah, oh, what's the point in all this? Well, this is a sad story. You, re you revealed your secret to me. It means you broke one of the rules set by the deity's herald. Yeah. Yes, will you make me regret this, Sabir? I just thought I felt you might be someone who could help my sister and me change our fates. Neutral good. What can I do to help? That actually is what I wanted to talk to you about. Vanira was supposed to tell you of an ancient treasury that we've been looking for. Gold isn't the only thing of value in this place. It may contain an ancient relic taken by the Dalden Raiders from respected Quadran Temple of Nethys. Taldor, the mighty empire of Taldor once stretched from Arcadian Ocean to the border of the Parisian Empire of Gales. Aroden himself was said to walk among the people of Taldor and his religion, a shining beacon unto the world, radiated outward from Taldor's gilded capital of Opara. Taldor's ancient armies of exploration established footholds for the empire throughout Galarian, and its mighty phalanxes marched, marched for thousands of miles during the Signing Crusade to beat back the Whispering Tyrant. Now Taldor is a student remnant of its old glory, stunted remnant of its old glory, having lost control of its daughter territories and is almost ignored by the powerful countries of the day, which assume it will continue its slow decline for at least another century. It is an unusual relic called the Disc of the Ellipse. I once heard beautiful story that it was created from shadow that hides the sun and the moon, but I don't think that could be true. Ethis is the god of magic who was once a mortal wizard. The relics from his temples are usually very powerful. There are many among his followers who think that solving the mysteries of magic in rivaling their deity is the best way to serve him. One such follower created the disc long ago in the distant past. According to legend, it gave its owner control it gave its owners control over planar travel, but only pairs of wizards bound by unbreakable ties could use it. That's interesting. While one of them traveled the plains, the other was his anchor in our world, and they could switch between. Do you see now why we so desperately wish to find the disc? It might help us understand how the switch between me and Kanira works, and it should make our divine patron happy. Ethus and his assistants value the desire to understand the mysteries of magic above all else. And how did this disc come to be in the Stolen Lands? It was brought here by Taldans from the 5th Army of Exploration. Taldor and Guarira were, were enemies for ages. Thousands of years ago, a soldier broke into the temple of Nethis and stole the relic to sell it or secretly hoard it as a heirloom. Hundreds of years later, his own kin, or the king of its hundredth buyer, brought the disc these strange lands where the Taldan had come uninvited as usual, and which they finally vanished from the with little trace. Sometimes history is incatrate lace, you'd never guess where it begins and where it ends. Okay, tell me about the location of the treasury. It was called Sorrow Flow in the chronicle we read. It was once a Taldan town founded by the veterans of the Fifth Army of Exploration. It stood on the shores of Turbulent River, and that was what destroyed it. One night a terrible flood devastated the settlement, killing many and driving the rest to flee. Only the tower of the cliff remained, which was too high for the flood to reach. Water covered the ruins for a long time, but last year it receded. My friends found a chronicle which recounted the destruction of the city and spoke of Disc of the Ellipse which was kept there. They managed to track down the ruins, 
but were frightened away by the monstrous beasts that roamed the area. Hey, sounds like my business. If this can help, then I agree. Thank you. I will wait for you there at Sorrowflow, and please let's explore the ruins together, just the two of us. I don't want to give myself away in front of your companions. Breaking the Archontank's conditions once was enough. I have no wish to anchor our god so long. Okay. Can I see the big map from here? No. Please only toggle them on and off. I want to see where we are heading. And she wants me to go there alone. You can travel. Let's just see. Let's not go yet. Let's just see. I can't even see it. Sorrow flow. Beyond Nettles Crossing. <laughs> 